Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here, and today I'm with Angus. Hey Angus. Hi Jem, how are you? I'm doing well, how are you? Good. So what are we talking about today? White balance. Talking about white balance, and a very, very important subject when we're talking about using any camera system. Yeah. We have the ability to instantly white balance, right? Yeah. And we can walk from one space to another, we can uh, stand outside and the color temperature can be changing constantly and we just have this ability to make sure that white looks like white. And we don't even know we're doing it. We're not conscious of it at all. These cameras, we basically have to either tell it what white is because it can only see one white at a time mm -hmm. or we can in fact put it into an auto white balance mode but that can be very, very problematic. And we're gonna actually show you in real production why that might be a problem, right? Yeah. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and bring up the menu here for white balance, which is on the top there. Mm -hmm. We can go into the menus as well, but right now we'll just bring it up here. And right now we're in auto white balance. Mm -hmm. So let's show people right away what the problem is with using auto white balance. I'm sure. actually gonna have Eva come in and we're gonna I'm record. gonna roll on this. Yep, so she's gonna walk into frame and we can see that the color temperature, and it's most noticeable on her skin, yep. it changes. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's a problem because problem. everything in the room changes as yeah. far as color. Yeah. So you can see what happens when we use auto white balance. So yeah. really the rule is, at least for us in production, never use auto white balance. Yep. And uh, that's great. Okay, good. So now let's go ahead and take a look at this Kelvin scale, which sure. is the thing that we are really always talking about when we're talking about color temperatures. Yeah. So right now we have daylight coming in. Yep. And in the background we it's have tungsten. Tungsten light, which is what is the average color temperature that we're defining? 3200, 3400 sometimes. Okay, and then daylight we're normally thinking around 5600. Okay. So we select it in the color temp menu. Yep. And here we are at 2500, which is the lowest color temperature uh, that the camera can record. Okay. So it's set at the bottom end of the range now, and as you dial it in, you can really see the color temperature change. Okay, so this, it starts at 2500 yep. Kelvin. And goes and it to 10,000. All, all the way up to 10,000. Yep. But of course, when we're changing that Kelvin scale, it's all dependent upon the type of light that we're in. Yeah, As absolutely. far as what we'll see. So now that we understand the Kelvin scale, mm -hmm. let's go ahead and talk about the problems that we can run into when we're using, as our key light, a window. Yep. We're using daylight, uh, we're using Mother Nature. Yep. And the problem with that is what? The first thing that can happen is the white balance can change drastically as clouds pass by the sun or if you start with a cloudy day set up and then the clouds clear the sun, the white balance is going to change enormously. So that's not just talking about an auto white balance, that's talking about locking in a color temperature on the Kelvin scale and having the light change so much that we see yep. what's happening in the scene change drastically. Exactly. So these are all considerations when we're thinking about white balancing your camera. Yep. So what can we do? Well, I think the best way to do it is to eliminate the variation by blocking out the window yep. and bringing our own light in. Got it. And it can be beautiful to light somebody by a window if you're doing just sort of a short little piece. Yeah. But if you're doing a long interview or you're bringing people into the same space over time, then you're going to see all of those changes. The sun is moving, it's yep. going behind, you know, behind clouds, all of that kind of stuff. Yep. Okay, good. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and black out this window. Mm -hmm. We're going to um, dip to black to do that. And when we come back up, we're going to have tungsten light sources. Yep. And again, this is subjective. We could bring in daylight balanced light sources and still have this change here where yeah, we're seeing absolutely. The... cooler and warmer. Yep. But in this case, we're not. Yeah. No, we, we want to achieve a more neutral scene. Got it. And then we're going to show people how to custom white balance. Sounds great. Okay, good. All right, Angus, so now we're back, mm -hmm. and we are still set to 6,000 Kelvin, yeah. but we're using tungsten light sources, yep. and what a big difference here. Yeah, absolutely. And not necessarily desirable. No. So let's talk about how we can fix this. There's sure. a couple of ways we can do it. The first yeah. way is we can just go right into the Kelvin dial, yep. and we're using tungsten light now, which would sort of start, we usually say 3200 Kelvin. Yeah. So we can start there. Let's take a look at that. And while it looks okay, we could probably warm this up a little bit. Yeah, I always find that skin tones like to be warmed up just a little. So we may come up to 35, 3600. Right. So now this looks a lot better. Um, but let's take a look at those other things that we saw in the menu. So we yeah. have some other settings here. Daylight. Yeah. So a good starting point. Good. And then we go to what? Shade. And the next is shade, which is going to warm up your look because it's not including the sun. It's only thinking that you're being illuminated by blue sky. Got it. Okay. So it's very warm. Cloudy is kind of splitting the difference between the two. Yep. And then tungsten is 
a pretty close approximation to what we're shooting here. Okay, and then we've got this one. Yep, fluorescent. Okay, so that's if you're under white fluorescent lights. Sure. If you're under, uh, you know, more green fluorescent lights, or even in a situation like this where we want to go in and let the camera take a look at and set the Kelvin temperature for us, mm -hmm. then we can use another setting here. This one right here, by the way, we're going to jump past flash. That's if you're using strobes or using yeah. a flash on your camera. Yep. That's different. Um, but for video production, this may be one that we go to a lot of the time as sure. well. Custom. Just custom white balance. Yeah. Okay, so it's important for us to show you how to custom white balance. Yeah. So we need to have something that's white. Yeah. Okay, good. And, and an accurate white, something that reflects equal amounts of red, green, and blue. Office paper or foam core may not necessarily give you that. Got it. And I mean, in the pinch, if you had to use that, oh, yeah, you could. it'll get you close, but this will get you dead on. If you're going to be using these cameras in production on a regular basis, you should have an accurate yeah. card to white balance to. Absolutely. Good. Okay, so let's go ahead and I'm going to actually, I'll you're going to have to give Eva. that to Eva. Okay. Yep. I'm going to keep this one. It's just another set of cards here. And now you're going to take the camera, and this is a big mistake that a lot of people make, is they keep the camera on the tripod system or in its original location and then they have somebody holding that card up and it's just filling up a little teeny bit of the frame but you can see what Angus is doing is he's having Eva hold the card in that lighting he's filling up all of the frame that's the idea yep. and you've taken a photograph of this yeah, it's a still picture just a still picture so you've actually you've left the camera in manual mode and everything but you've just fired off a shot yeah so yeah. let's see how we can white balance using this picture yeah so we're not going into the white balance button on the top of the camera we're mm -hmm. going into the menu got it and we're choosing custom white balance and then what are you going to do uh, we press set and so it's going to bring up the last still that you shot, which in this case was the white balance card. So we're going to press set again, and it's going to ask me if I want to use this image to set the white balance. Uh, we're going to scroll across to OK yep. and press set again. Yep. And when you do that, it analyzes that image. Oh, that's it. Yeah. It's done. Yep. OK, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the image. We'll go back to live view. Sure. And there it is. So we have a custom white balance here, and if we're doing a multi-camera situation, we might just lock all the cameras into one color temperature. Yeah, or if you're in a situation where you feel compelled to use a custom white balance, make sure you bring all of the cameras to the same card in the same position yep. so they're all reading the same data. All right. All right. So, basic rules, don't use auto white balance. Steer clear of auto white balance. Dial in your color temperature using Kelvin, mm -hmm. and we usually recommend using this LCD. Look at it dead on, okay? When we're in a multi-camera situation, we can lock in a consistent color temperature for all of the cameras. Yep. If we're going to use custom white balance, yep. which is great. You need to bring all of the cameras to the same card in the same lighting, shoot all the stills at the same time. Yep. You'll be fine. Good. And use the presets if you want to. Mm. We generally use Kelvin and we use custom white balance. Yeah. And I think that's about it. I think so. Get yourself a good white card. Definitely. And thank you, Eva. And thank you, Angus. Thank you, Jim.